Hello everyone, my name is Marsha Nuts, and today I want to teach you how to make this beautiful bracelet. I absolutely love this bracelet, it's so cool. I made this as part of the 24 hour bracelet challenge that I filmed. That video was really fun to make by the way, and it turned out so much better than my first attempt at the challenge. I'll leave it linked in the card and in the description if you want to watch it. And I had so much fun making this, I made this in pretty much one sitting, and it was a blast. This bracelet is also becoming like one of my absolute favorite bracelets. It's so cool. It really reminds me of the Starburst bracelet that I also have a tutorial on, which I'll also leave linked, but this is a little thinner and a little bit simpler to make than that one. That being said, this is not a beginner tutorial whatsoever. This is a pretty advanced tutorial. I'll be going really fast within this tutorial and I'll be explaining several steps in one go, grouping rows together. So if you're a beginner, I'd skip this one and I'd work my way up to it. But if you think you're up for it, Let's get into it. I wrote a book. It's called The Beginner's Guide to Friendship Bracelets. And it is in fact a guide for beginners on friendship bracelets. It talks about everything you need to know as a beginner friendship bracelet maker. And it teaches you all of the basics in photo tutorials from how to make the basic knots, loops, patterns, and also simple bracelets. It comes out on August 23rd in the US and about a month later everywhere else. And you can pre-order now. It's available for pre-order pretty much anywhere you typically buy books. And if you do pre-order, which I highly encourage you do, you can enter a giveaway to win one of four packages containing a bracelet, a bunch of my favorite sparkly, multicolored and metallic string, some materials and some washi tape as well. To enter the giveaway, you need to send a screenshot of proof of purchase to my publisher, Rocky Nook, on their website. The link to that will be in the description. So for this bracelet, you're gonna need six colors for the design and one color for the background. For each of the colors within the design, you're either going to need two strings per color, about one meter in length, or if you're doing a loop like me, which I highly recommend because the loop plus triangle ends really complements the pattern here. If you're doing a loop like me, you're gonna need one string per color, which is gonna be about two meters in length. And for the background, again, if you're not doing a loop, that will be 12 strings, about one meter in length. Or if you are doing a loop, which I recommend, that will be six strings, about two meters in length. And as I just said, I really really recommend making a loop plus two triangle ends here. And as this is a more advanced tutorial, I'm not really gonna explain things here. I've got a separate tutorial for the basic loops and I've got a tutorial for triangle ends after a loop, which will be both linked in the card and in the description. All you need to know to make a triangle end after a loop for this pattern is the string order and like the place where I cut the bracelet for the triangle ends. And I'm showing you that on screen at the moment. Since this is a symmetrical bracelet on the left and on the right side, you can see that it's just a white string. And then the first three strings that are gonna be in the middle of the design. In my case, it's the three shades of orange, then another white string, and then the second three strings, which are on the outer side of the design. And then for the part of the triangle ends that are in the center, it's just four white strings. So that's the string order for the triangle ends. Let's get into the tutorial. This bracelet is kind of reminiscent of the starburst pattern, which if you don't know what that is, you might want to check that out. I also did a tutorial for that. It's also a really fun pattern to make, but this one I feel like is a little bit easier. We're going to start off by doing a simple chevron. So you're going to grab all the white strings that are coming off from the inner parts of the triangle ends, and then also the first white string from the outer part of the triangle ends, the one that's sticking out from here. And you're gonna do that on both sides. So those white strings that are from the outer part of the triangle end coming off from here are gonna do a row of chevron, which is basically the string on the left is gonna do a row of forward knots into the center, the string on the right is gonna do a row of backward knots into the center. Now this little mini section that I'm gonna talk about now is only relevant if you're doing this for the first time. So if you're re-watching this tutorial to sort of continue the design, skip this part because I'm gonna be talking about how to connect the triangle ends. But if you're doing it the first time, this might be relevant to you. I don't like to connect my triangle ends until I have knots to go over the connection with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start making that chevron, but I'm not going to make that connection between the triangle ends yet. Which basically means that I'm gonna do three forward knots on the left and then three backward knots on the right, and then I'm gonna connect the two triangle ends. All right, so the two strings that were just doing the chevron rows, these two strings are now closer to the center and I'm ready to make that connection because as soon as I make that connection between the two triangle ends, I'm gonna go over that connection with these two strings as the chevron. Basically, when I connect the two triangle ends, I'm gonna go over that connection straight away and that helps strengthen that connection and reduce the risk of it kind of pulling apart and creating an ugly knot that connects the two triangle ends. That's just kind of a tip, I guess. I'm gonna very carefully make that connection between the two triangle ends, I'm gonna sort of Keep my finger there, I guess. There we go. And now I'm gonna finish that chevron, bringing both of those white strings into the center. All right, so now we're gonna grab the first white string that's poking out from here. And we're gonna do a row of backward knots until the edge.
Next, we're gonna do a weird sort of zigzaggy motion. The first color string, which is the orange, is gonna do three forward knots. After that, the next white string peeking out from here is gonna do five backward knots. Then the next color string is gonna do two forward knots. Then the next white string is gonna do three backward knots. The next color string, which will be the yellow, will do one forward knot, and the final white string will do one backward knot. So they're kind of going in a zigzag motion. We're doing forward knots, then backward knots, then forward knots, then backward knots. And we're alternating the color strings with the white strings. So again, the first color string, which is the orange, is gonna do three forward knots. Then the white string is gonna do five backward knots. The next color string is gonna do two forward knots. The next white string, three backward knots. The next color string, one forward knot, and the next white string, one backward knot. And I'm gonna speed through this. All right, so now we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side, except in opposite knots. So the first white string coming out from here is gonna do a full row of forward knots up until the very edge. And now we're gonna do this sort of zigzaggy motion again. So this time the first color string is gonna do three backward knots. Then the first white string is gonna do five forward knots. The next color string does two backward knots. The next white string does three forward knots. The next color string does one backward knot. And the final white string does one forward knot. So again, we go three to the left, five to the right, two to the left, three to the right, one to the left and one to the right. All right, so now we're gonna work on the little triangle on the left. Separate your strings like so. That final knot of white that we did for this section separates into two white strings, one going to the left and one going to the right. Take the one that's to the right and all of the strings after that and put them off to the side. We're not working with those. We're just focused on these strings. And this white string coming off from that same knot is very important because this is the last string we're gonna be making the knot onto. So for each of these strings, one by one, starting with the green, then the light blue, then the dark blue, then all of the white strings, we are gonna do forward knots until this white string. So for the green string, that's gonna be one forward knot because it's right next to it. The blue string is gonna be two forward knots. The next blue string is gonna be three forward knots. Then for the white, it's gonna be three, two, and one as we reach the edge. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, except of course, opposite. So again, that last knot that we did for the previous step separates into two white strings. One goes to the left, one goes to the right. We separate at that knot, and the one going to the right will be the last string we make knots onto for this section. So we start with the green string, that does one knot to the left and a backward knot. Then the next blue string does two backward knots, then the blue string after that does three backward knots, and then the white strings do three, two, and one backward knots, up until this white string. The next step is probably the easiest, which is literally just a reverse chevron. These two white strings in the center, the one on the right does a row of forward knots until the edge, the one on the left does a row of backward knots until the edge in a reverse chevron shape.
Right, the next part we need to do is the diamond in the center. As this is a more advanced tutorial, I'm hoping that you are more or less familiar with diamonds, so I'm gonna sort of speed through this bit. We're ignoring the white strings here, we're only working with the color strings in the middle. Well, and the two white strings that are in between those. We grab the color that is in the center, whichever color that is for the step that we're doing, which is the orange for me for now, make it up between those two and do a sort of reverse chevron shape where the string on the right goes to the right in forward knots, the string on the left goes to the left in backward knots until the last string here, at which point they're gonna do reverse knots. So the string on the right does a forward backward knot, reversing it back in, the string on the left is gonna do a backward forward knot, reversing it back in. Next, those two pairs of strings are gonna be put off to the side. The next color string is gonna do the same thing. It's gonna do a knot between the two colors, then a reverse chevron shape. One goes to the right, one goes to the left. Then it meets the second color string here on the edge. It does a reverse knot onto that. Same on the left, a backward forward knot. Then again, you put those strings off to the side. So the kind of the diamond shape in the center gets smaller and smaller with each try. Then the last color string, the third color string is gonna do the same thing. By that point, there's only gonna be like three knots. And then you do a point in the center where the two white strings meet. That's just gonna be one forward knot. And after that, each of those colors, starting with the one in the center, the yellow, are gonna do a chevron shape, closing that diamond off. So that yellow string is gonna do that chevron, then the orange string, then the darkest orange string is gonna do that chevron, closing that diamond off. So there you go, it's literally just a diamond with three colors and a dot in the center. Next, we're just gonna do a row of chevron. The white strings here and here are gonna come together and meet in the center. All right, now we're gonna focus on the green and blue strings over here. The first blue string is gonna do three backward knots. The second blue string is gonna do two backward knots and the green string is gonna do one backward knot. Then on the other side, the mirror version of this, the first blue string is gonna do three forward knots, the second blue string is gonna do two forward knots, and the green string is gonna do one forward knot. Next up, we're gonna be doing the zigzag motion that we did at the top here. Starting with the two white strings here, we're gonna do one forward knot with the white strings, one backward knot with the yellow. Three forward knots with the next white string, two backward knots with the orange. Five forward knots with the next white string, three backward knots with the next orange. And finally, seven backward knots with the final white string. The exact same thing, but in reverse, is going to be happening here. We're gonna start with a backward knot between these two white strings. Then the yellow is gonna do a forward knot. Then the next white string, is gonna do three backward knots, then the orange, two forward knots, the next white string, five backward knots, the next orange, three forward knots, and the final white string, seven backward knots. Now we're gonna focus on creating the diamond of the white. There's multiple ways to do this because it's essentially just making knots between all of the strings of white. It doesn't really matter what knots you do because all of these strings are the same colors. So you could do like reverse chevrons until you run out of strings. You could knot it row by row until you run out of strings. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna do rows of forward knots. So for each string on the left, I'm gonna go all the way to the right in forward knots until I run out of string. And obviously I'm only talking about the white strings here. These strings don't play a part in that, so 
ignore those. A row of forward knots until the last white string. That's how I'm personally going to do this. And the last step we're going to talk about are the two triangles on the left and on the right sides. These are essentially the same thing as the diamond except cut in half. So the triangle on the left, that means the outermost string goes all the way to the right until the last color string. It does a reverse knot on that, so a forward backward knot for the left side. Then that pair would go off to the side. Then the next color string would do the same row forward knots until the last string here, a forward backward knot on that. Then that pair would go off to the side. And the next color would do the same thing a row of forward knots, which would literally just be one by that point, and then a forward backward knot. Then it would go reverse. So the closest string to the edge, the closest color string, would do a backward knot. Then the next color string, which would be the light blue, would do a row of backward knots until the edge. And finally, the dark blue would do a row of backward knots until the edge. Same thing here on the right side, except obviously in reverse knots. So it would start off with a row of backward knots until the last color string, onto which it will do a backward forward knot. Then the next color string, which would be the light blue, would do a row of backward knots and then do a backward forward knot on the last one. Then the green, a backward knot, backward forward knot. And then they would go to the right in forward knots, bringing all of those out one by one. And there we go, that's the entirety of the repeating pattern. You can scroll back to the beginning of this tutorial to repeat the pattern again. Repeat the pattern as many times as you need until the bracelet reaches the length that you want. I'm gonna finish this bracelet in two triangle ends and I recommend you do the same because the pattern complements it very well. To do that, you would have to stop making the bracelet before we make the two triangles and before you make the diamond here. So sort of in that shape. And then you would do the two triangle ends for which I have a separate tutorial. Once again, it's linked in the description. I'm gonna go finish making this bracelet and I'll see you once I'm done. And there we go. This is what the bracelet ends up looking like. I did triangle ends for the bottom, except I flipped the bracelet, did the triangle ends on this side, then flipped it back so that the knots are kind of behind it. So that's what it ended up looking like. And I did twisted ties for the ends. I separated the white and the colors into separate strands. And I think that looks really cute. As I said, I absolutely love this bracelet. This is definitely a new favorite of mine. I think it's really gorgeous. And I hope you liked it too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. I also wanna remind you that my book is coming out really soon. The Beginner's Guide to Friendship Bracelet comes out on August 23rd in the US and about a month later everywhere else in the world. And it's available for pre-order now, anywhere you typically buy books. If you do pre-order, which I highly recommend, make sure to send a screenshot of your order confirmation to my publisher at rockynook.com slash friendship to be entered to win in a giveaway. There'll be four winners and each of them will get a bracelet from me, a selection of my favorite sparkly and multicolored string and some bracelet materials. I also wanna give a special shout out to my patrons and especially my top supporters. Thank you guys so, so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. If you also wanna become a patron and support the work that I do on this channel, the link to my Patreon is in the description. But in any case, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Thank you.